Today I'm going to recommend a movie that won't work for a lot of people. It's the kind of film that has a pretty split response from audiences, a slow burn into the surreal and strange. The kind of movie that you might recommend to your friends if you want them to stop texting you. Why it's censor! Censor is an indie psychological horror film that follows Enid, a film censor responsible for cutting the most violent and disturbing scenes from films during Britain's Video Nasties era in the 1980s. One day, she's assigned an eerie film that recalls some of her own childhood trauma, and she becomes convinced that the film is tied to the disappearance of her sister. As Enid investigates further, the lines between fiction and reality start to blur. Censor released earlier this year in June, and I haven't been able to get it out of my head. Malignant may have been my favorite horror movie this year for how unexpectedly crazy and fun it was, but Censor is the one I keep going back to for repeat viewings. And each time I do, I'm finding new details that make me appreciate it more and more. It's kind of become a comfort movie for me. Weird, I know, but it just checks a lot of boxes for me. The film is very well paced and shot. You can tell that every detail from the sets, locations, and costumes were all given a lot of thought because they all serve to inform us on the character throughout the film. Censor feels like it was made by someone that's directed a ton of movies, but it's actually the feature length debut of director Prano Bailey Bond. She's made some short films before this, uh, Nasty being the one that inspired Censor, and in those you can find the same level of care and thought behind the material. I can't wait to see what she does next, and I can say the same of Neve Auger who plays Enid. Censor is very much a character-driven horror movie, and so the whole thing relies on her performance. Enid is pretty reserved and standoffish. She puts up walls to keep people out and could have easily just been a cold character. But with just a simple look, Neve invites us to fully empathize with Enid. And by the end, I was left feeling really sad for her character in a way. Maybe we could get out of here sometime. Go for a drink. There are also some really clever attributes added in the script and with the direction that help flesh the character out as well. Details like her nervous tick are pretty obvious on a first viewing, but it's things like her shrinking posture or her hair slowly unraveling as she falls deeper into madness that you may not notice until a second watch. Another clever way the film clues you in on Enid's declining mental state is through the cinematography by Annika Summerson. This movie looks incredible. It was shot primarily on 35, but has some segments on 8mm and even VHS, which really feel authentic to that video nasties era backdrop it's set in. They also play around with the aspect ratio in the final act, but it's not just for style, and it actually informs us on Enid's mindset. There are some expressive lighting choices in the dreamy segments that have a clear inspiration from Italian giallos, but again, it's more than just a simple stylistic choice. And you'll notice some of the same lighting start to creep its way into Enid's crumbling reality in subtle ways, which I thought was just great. The sound design and editing are also really strong here, with some really cool and effective analog sounds and really solid transitions and pacing all throughout. I fully recommend this movie, especially to anyone that enjoys David Lynch or Cronenberg. But I have to say it's a bit underwhelming at first, and I can see why it doesn't work for some people. There are a lot of unanswered questions by the end, and it's left up to you to answer them for yourself. I both loved and hated that. The film asks a lot of questions. There's obviously the mystery of Enid's sister, but I'm more referring to the themes of the movie like repressed trauma, guilt, and the effects of repeated exposure to violence in film. Part of me wanted to see some of these ideas explored a bit further, but the other part of me loves the ambiguity. Though I can see why it doesn't land with some people, so proceed with caution. I would say more, but it's kind of the movie you want to know very little about before watching. It's a quick watch, and as of the making of this video, it's available on Hulu, so go check it out. You can also pick up the new Blu-ray release from Vinegar Syndrome if you love nice things. I love the posters and artwork for Sensor, and I just found this set very aesthetically pleasing. It's also really high quality. There's artwork on every side of this thing, the titles are all embossed, 
you get this hardcover case that won't crease or bend on you, and inside there's an equally sturdy slipcover. Though I've heard some horror stories about the slipcovers from Vinegar Syndrome destroying the plastic on Blu-rays when you put it back in, so just be aware of that. Now here's the cool reveal of the Blu-ray, which I of course had to redo when I realized I had it backwards. Nice one. Inside you get a booklet with some art and an essay, similar to something you'd find in a Criterion, and the artwork is reversible like you'd find in a Screen Factory release. And of course there's a lot of special features which I'll leave on the screen now. I'm still finishing those up now. They're all pretty lengthy video essays and interviews, and of course I'm excited to listen to the commentaries. You also get the original Nasties short film, which was cool. I recommend this Blu-ray, but no matter how you see it, just check out Sensor. It's a cool movie that may take you by surprise or have you unsubscribing from me. But either way, if you enjoyed this review, leave it a like so more people can find out about this movie. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye!